So I start the recording now. Ah, also. So if Donald is recording, Pasha, mm -hmm. yes. may I ask you a question that your father always asks people to hold mm -hmm. me on a button? It means what does first mean? to ask questions when. Uh, when my explanation is not clear, okay? Oh. And uh, also uh, ask me to make a break after 40 minutes of uh, talking. So wh what, is the, what is the official format? So 40? 40 plus 40 plus 40. Mm -hmm. okay. Because uh, the time of attention, is, it's known, it's 40 minutes. All right. Okay, so still people are coming. You know, these brakes are like a pit stops when you have a, a racing car. So if you go without a pit stop, uh, it will result into a crash. So somebody from the team tells the driver, now you need to change tires, okay? Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe, ah, maybe I can, so first of all, we are waiting only for four minutes. Four minutes is not enough. Um, <clears throat> ah, I will, I also have an alarm, okay? I can put an alarm. Not yet. Okay. Okay. So I think now we should start. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so maybe, Donald, may I ask you to start recording? It's already recording. Yes. It's already recorded. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the topic of my today's talk would be tropical philosophy and uh, with applications to A models, string theory, etc. So first, I'll explain general philosophy. Okay. And uh, then I'll come to examples. So uh, what I'm going to tell about tropical phenomena and tropical philosophy is not what people uh, mostly read in, uh, in the books. However, it's very related. So let me start with something old. So old tropical. as written in some books. In uh, the numbers, we have two operations. Plus 
and stop. Of course, we have also minus and operation of division, but these are main. And uh, people study something like polynomials. of real variables and study something like asymptotics at x going to plus infinity. Once again, that's all. Of course, they assume that CK is positive. And what did they found? They found that first thing, xk is much greater than xl if k is bigger than l. Okay? It's true. So if you have xk plus xl, you can ignore it. Second, xk times xl equals xk plus l. So they somehow decided to formalize it. So multiplication goes to the adding exponents. So they said, okay, when we start the asymptotics of polynomials, we can make so-called tropical semi-ring. We would replace plus by maximum. And we will replace multiplication by plus. Once again, I am explaining the old tropical idea. You see? I am explaining you this old idea in order to avoid confusion, because after uh, these lectures, you may say, oh, this guy, namely me, explains tropical in a different way than other people explain. So what is the relation? That's why I uh, give you the old explanation. They call it tropical semi-ring. It's clear that everything is commutative, associative, distributive, and people were happy. It's called tropical because uh, people realized it somewhere in Brazil on some conference, I think in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, they devoted it to the person who organized this nice conference. And I forgot his name. Nevertheless, it's like this. Tropical semi-ring and say, let us work over tropical semi-ring. Let us think about it in some detail. So this second, when we, when we take multiplication to a sum is of course called log. So log is a map that takes multiplication into a sum. Any log does this. Now let us think about the first operation. What does it mean to take plus to maximum? Log doesn't take plus to maximum. Then how could it be that we can 
accompany log with this thing. Idea is uh, very strange, but very deep. It's called not all log would go, but a special log. Okay. So what would be the special about this log? So in ordinary log, we say to a number a, we associate e to the a tilde. Okay. A times b. A plus b goes to something other. However. Now we will be clever and replace a tilde by a divided over h. I'll write it like this. And this I call a tropical. Of course. If I multiply, this will go a tropical plus b tropical over h. Here I have no problem. However, what about a plus b? It goes to e a tropical over h plus e to the b tropical over h. Now, let us consider the limit h going to zero. You see, it is an idea of putting the plane constant <coughs> into mathematics. Mm -hmm. So now, here, what, what happens? If a tropical is bigger than B tropical, then this thing equals to E to the A tropical over H, one plus minus And if I take h to zero, this goes to zero. So here I get this maximum law. So what I'm talking about is still uh, all tropical uh, philosophy. So in other terms, A tropical is H logarithm A. So I take log from the, mm -hmm. and we consider very strange limit H goes to zero. By the way, it's not only formal thing. You should see that when you are doing such things, that finite, finite a tropical means means what? Means infinite 
A. So it is about the symptotics. Moreover, A tropical is bigger than B tropical means A is much bigger than B. Okay. Now, let me immediately give an application and explain why people call it, call this thing H. Any questions so far? We, we can think uh, of a tropical, this, this stuff as just a ring in H, right? Uh, so, no, well, well just. Uh, yes, yes. And I, I will come to this immediately, yes. Okay. Yes. So, so in some sense, what you say, good, it's very good point. What does it mean H goes to zero? It actually means that we work over the formal disk. So this is all the Cauchy. And uh, this is Gross and Dick. Okay. So there are no zeros. No, there are zeros, but uh, whenever you take a limit, it means that you go to the formal uh, vicinity. Okay, you know, now, now there'll be an example that explains why this parameter is called H bar. Very strange example. I'll call it meta example. Functional integral. First of all, functional integral is an idea. Originally, idea. What does this mean? So you can read it in many books. That functional integral, I call it IF. So here action, so when people write it, they say that S of phi is some integral over some sigma. And here we have some Lagrangian so it's local functions of files. So people understand what this means. Actually, they prefer to put here minus. Now, when uh, mathematicians are coming to physicists, asking them what this means. So people are not very clear about it because space of trajectories of field is infinite dimensional. So they don't want to actually study this. However, what if we consider it in the tropical sense? Here we have integral that is infinite, but it's a sum. And we can use some rule of tropical world. It means that here we take 
the maximum in this sub. So I Feynman tropical. So here is I Feynman. So I'm trying to understand tropical, tropical transformation. So sum goes to the extremo. So it is e to the one over h s. And here I put phi extremo. So from this, you see that I drop it that uh, I Feynman in tropical limit is S on phi extremum. So in so-called mathematical physics, tropical takes functional integral into the classical action on extremal configuration. And remember, there was kind of a rule about cutting, cutting rule of QFT in terms of Siegel. If we work here over tropical ring, we can say the following. Phi extremo on <laughs> sigma one united with C2 is what? Is phi extremo on sigma one, phi extremo on sigma two, and also, you see there are many, there are more phi extremos on sigma one and sigma two than phi extremos on sigma one times sigma two. And also some condition on the boundary. Namely, the boundary value of phi here and here should coincide. But the fact that two bound the, that two boundary values coincide could be also expressed in terms of of this. And here I take once again the integral. So maybe we will come to this later on, but uh, at the moment you may just believe me that it goes like this. So if you consider a uh, normal distribution, a normal contribution from the extreme, that you get more information. So I, I, will, I, will, I will come to this in a second. Okay. So here I'm just trying to say that that the multiplication rule in tropical comes from the fact that phi extremal breaks into two phi extremals and the action is an integral of Lagrangian of local Lagrangian. So you may just think about it philosophically. And now, so so-called classical uh, physics is just a tropical limit of functional integral. 
Mm, that's why I call this thing H. Moreover, as some of you proposed, it is very reasonable to consider everything. Okay, I'll write it here. Replace H going to zero by the following base. Formal series. So we can have so-called quantum correction. to tropical world, okay? So it is a lot of information. Actually, I, I have not seen uh, papers that study this quantum correction in uh, detail. People just say tropical summer ring, that's it. This is a nice refinement of the notion. And you know, you will always have something like this when you will study something like deformation theory, whatever. You will always have something like this when you have, so it's a general phenomenon. Consider e to the minus t of operator O. Deform operator O. You will have a nice expression. Look at this limit. If when you expand an epsilon, you have an integral from zero to t of, sorry, delta, of delta of O. And this will go like T. So when you expand an epsilon, you will get something like polynomials T over T in front of some exponential. So I don't know which is your uh, experience in uh, mathematics, but when you do things, you often find these structures. Taking this exponential, or putting here Jordan blocks, or many times. You see, I bet it like three or four times in different contexts. From the tropical point of view, it is like log. Tropical. Oh, sorry. So you have these uh, things. It's it's kind of universal phenomena. Uh, Pick your own example, and every time when you have uh, polynomials and exponentials or logs and uh, polynomials, you have it. 
And whenever you have this, you may think about it somehow as a H prime correction. So this would make your intuition. Uh, maybe we could uh, sometimes study these corrections to algebraic geometry that it is uh, where, I am, where I am aiming to. So this is an old tropical world. Old world. And you might think that it's enough. But it's exactly that you need to know about tropical world. And this is wrong. This is very wrong. Because uh, it turns out that one should study more elaborate notion, namely complex tropical world. So complex tropical world appears in the work in the works of Grigory Michalkin. And uh, whom else should I mention? And uh, his collaborations. It is assumed, not explicitly by Foucault. And so this thing uh, I will explain uh, on my uh, extra Friday, on, on the Friday complementary thing. So here we have complex tropical world. So what does it mean? We first, we do not like to have semi rings. We would like to have rings. Moreover, we would like to have fields and not just rings. So, Somehow it is related to the fact that we have to go to complex numbers. Where we still have exponential. So let us take the complex number Z. When I say we would like to tropicalize it, it was mean that you'd like to work it in the following way. Z tropical over H ha ha. Now I'll write you something wrong. No, it's wrong. Not like this. We should not divide by H angular piece of Z. We keep it intact. Ah. So this is the modification one has to do. So Z1 or Z plus W, Z times W corresponds to, so phi tropical is just phi, corresponds to E to the Z tropical over H plus 
W tropical over H e to the phi Z plus phi W. Of course, we can write it down as a formula. But this is the idea. So you tropicalize the module of complex number. You see, it's important because it's it's this module of complex number of complex number that uh, that is important to see how big you are. Okay. So of course multiplication goes to pluses, and uh, now let us see what happens with z plus w. You can easily see that the module of the sum is completely governed by the largest exponent. It's okay. Now, being that smart, I can try to say, Fields, rings, not semi rings. Okay. You know, even here I already made a mistake. Who can catch me? Made a mistake. So you are saying the phase will disappear when we go to infinity? So, so make a mistake. So is it true that? Z plus W tropical equals maximum of Z tropical W tropical in this case. Could you give a counterexample? And if you and if you and if you cannot give a counterexample, I will give a counterexample. Given a face, they can cancel each other. Good. Thank you, Sam. Exactly. So Sam gave a counterexample. So this minus is exactly the phase. Okay. And then if W tropical equals 
the tropical, we get zero. So it is not the maximum of these two. It is uh, minus infinity. And depends on the phase. Mm. So it is a phenomenon. And now it is time for me to make a break. I want you to think a little bit on this phenomena. And just after the break, we will continue the study of the magical world of complex tropical numbers. And of course, it's relation to algebraic geometry. So now we have a five minute break. Then thank you for getting this counterexample. Okay. Yeah. Five minutes break. Meanwhile, I can answer a question. I hope that I went slow enough. Pasha, did I went slow enough? I, I think so. I think so. Maybe too slow. We need to adjust my speed. Um, sorry, I'm um, I'm not I'm not the right gauge. Uh, it's I'm it's it's night here. I'm a bit sleepy. Yes, I, uh, I, for for yeah. me for me the for me the problem is not the tempo. It's the how to, how to say the clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I mean, so, something happens. So uh, there's a map uh, h bar log z, which is um, you know, whatever it is, a diffeomorphism from uh, between R plus and R for in the real case, but then you are kind of taking an illegal limit and you are looking at the pullback of the, of the ring operations. And under this pullback, in the limit, something happens. Yes, so, uh, yes, of course. So without taking crazy limit, I will get mm -hmm. no information. You are yes. absolutely right. It was, I think, a paper of Alec Viro, the <clears throat> like a little uh, paper, like uh, I don't know, for maybe for school kids or I don't know, but about how to how to plot a graph of a polynomial on a double logarithmic paper. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the. It's exactly what I called old. Yes. Exactly. And uh, that's why I stress that it is old. Yes. So is Vero still alive? Yes, absolutely. Good. So uh, you see, there, there was some, somebody else. He is the teacher of Michalkin. He is uh, Michalkin's teacher. OK. Yes. But OK, so new blood comes. As far as I understand. Yes. So can people consider uh, quantum tunneling? Quantum, uh, quantum tunneling. So the tropics seems only concentrated on classical vacuum. Uh, 
So if you modular this uh, quantum tunneling, you get a real quantum vacuum. It's, uh, it's a good issue how to understand the uh, quantum phenomena in terms of this language. So yes. typically, you have exponential phenomena and polynomial phenomena. Yes. So exponential phenomena is something that is governed by by tropical limit h going to zero and polynomial phenomena in front of exponential or logs in front of polynomial should be considered as h-bar phenomena. So it is very instructive, I think. It's very instructive to study what's going here and to rethink it in the power series in H. The perturbative vacuum is not a true vacuum. It's like a classical vacuum. So uh, here one has to think about models and examples. Yes. So uh, I am. So what I am actually doing, I am inviting you to think about it. I don't know all uh, examples. Maybe you can invent examples. But in order to invent example, you need to come here to this world. Okay? So I actually think that it is like a bit like analysis of linear algebra that this study of asymptotics is kind of a universal uh, phenomena. You can tropicalize everything somehow. And you have this strange or crazy new picture. So now we have COVID and of course they are doing uh, log plots. Of course, uh, it's possible uh, to, to do, to have uh, double log plots as Pasha proposed. So double log plots, it's one idea. Second idea is you do these double log plots only with the moduli and you do not change phase. You see phenomena that self discovered appeared when we add phase. When we thought about uh, tropical semi-ring, this was one and this was one. And we never had this I to the IP, this Euler phenomenon. Okay, so we, we will uh, start right now. So actually, I didn't understand how this uh, transition to uh, complex situation helps helped us with rings versus fields. Andrei? So before we start, Pasha, yes, I'm here. yes, I, I'm here. I have a question. So, yes. uh, so you said that this transition to the complex situation um, helped us helps us 
uh, with ring, ring versus, rings versus fields, and I, I don't no, no, understand uh, this. First, first, not a semi-ring, but a ring. So two things. Yes. Here, so you have here, well, well, you have a ring. In the ring, the additive group, this addition should also be a group, not semi-group. But it will also come to fields. So Sorry. already when we went to a ring, we had some phenomena. And when we we'll go, go to fields, we will have more phenomena. So I don't understand anything. So in the real situation, we had, uh, what was it? In, in the real situation, when you have a sum and you have no phase, this, uh, the asymptotic of this is, of course, the maximum of this. Yes. If you allow to have phase or just allow to have minus, mm -hmm. you can see that A minus B mm -hmm. could be minus infinity. Okay. So it's interesting. <laughs> yes. That you see. Very naive thing just to put minus here. Mm -hmm. It's time to continue. But I want to tell you, Pasha, before we continue, that mm -hmm. in our paper, okay, mm -hmm. we had these mm -hmm. laws, right? Yes. Our operator yes. product expansion was just uh, pulls and logs. Mm, yes. Nothing else. Yes. It means that we also somehow have tropical phenomena. Mm, I don't know. Are all logs in the world tropical phenomena? All logs appear, appear in NLPs? Conjecture is that yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a very universal phenomena. Whenever you have poles and logs, or uh, you have polynomials and uh, exponentials, mm -hmm. it's something very universal. I am telling you, it's as universal as a linear algebra or as, or as analysis. So in analysis, you can differentiate whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. In linear algebra, you can add whatever you want. So philosophy is that in some class of problems, you may tropicalize almost everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll continue. So here is this magic formula. What are you doing? Doing something like this, not something doing exactly this. Now, let us try to write down the plot. Let us consider the main example. And this main example would be, of course, the map. Y equals constant Z minus A, Z minus B. 
OK? So, this, so what is this? There are many ways uh, to view this. <coughs> <coughs> It, it could be considered as a simplest rational function second it could be considered as a curve in cp1 times cp1 okay of by degree one one. Okay. So, sorry, what, what do you mean by the second? So consider space of all y's and z's. Let us consider projection to the first to the first uh, factor to z or to z to the second factor. For each point. On CP1, we have uh, one point on the curve. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, A, B, C are parameters. Okay. Mm -hmm. You may ask why I am uh, explaining it in terms of curve and not a rational function. Function. You will see in a second. So sometimes it's good to have uh, two points of view. Let me show what what I am uh, stressing to. What I have in mind. So oh, in my school days, in my school days, we studied this function. We call this hyperbola. Okay. No, hyperbola. So. In my middle school, we studied this. So for each Z, you have Y. And I remember how we plotted it like this. Of course, we studied that it is a function. Okay. Now, it could be also considered as a curve. Y z equals k. What is this curve? Okay, so here I'd like to put coordinate axis in blue. So being a curve, it had of course a projection to vertical line and to horizontal line. And degree of this projection as well. However, here I can deform this curve. What would happen if I put k to zero? So you can you can deform it as a curve. It will go like this. As a curve. However, is it a function 
Of course, no, it's not a function. This curve says the following. For any point Z that is different than zero, you have zero. But if z is zero, it's not a function. You have the full, the full line right here. If you put zero here and zero here, you don't know what's going on. So it is kind of instructive. It says that sometimes you should replace functions by correspondences. Okay, so correspondences are more general than functions. Correspondences uh, are just uh, curves or some surfaces with the given degrees of projection. Okay, so I have this in mind. And this example would help me right now. So instead of writing here logs, I'll, I'll put uh, tropical coordinates here. Yes. So what can we read out of this? First of all, we need to see what happens with the tropical coordinates. And then we can try to see what's going on with phases. Let us try to write down what happens. So I will write a plot. So here I'll have y tropical. Here I'll have z tropical. And let me plot what is going on. So first, first case. Let me come from the small z's. When z tropical is smaller than what? Than a tropical, and z tropical is smaller than b tropical. 
And let me assume some ordering. Say that A tropical is uh, smaller than B tropical. So here I put this point, A tropical, B tropical. So my aim is to write down the plot. What can happen? So in the first case, the, the moduli of this number is much smaller than the moduli of this number, and I could ignore it. The same happens here. So I ignore that dependence. So if I ignore that dependence, it means that it's a constant map. And uh, I may be interested in what, what is this value? I cancel these terms, I cancel minuses. I see that Y tropical is C tropical minus A or plus A minus B. So I'll study what happens when Z tropical equals to A tropical later. Peculiar things happen. Let us first go to the region. When Z tropical is bigger than A tropical, but is below than B tropical. is this region. It is clear what's going on. I can still neglect this one. Okay. Because B tropical is bigger. And here I can neglect this term. So in this region, I see that Z, that Z tropical equals what? C tropical, uh, sorry, my tropical. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's pretty. C tropical. Plus Z tropical minus B tropical, right? And this is a linear function with the slope one. Pi over, over uh, four. Let us check that uh, as when z t is equals to a t, there is no jump here. Now, what comes in the third region when z tropical? is bigger than B tropical. Then I can ignore these two things. Right? And I am coming to C tropical.
So let me check. Yes, when Z tropical equals B tropical, I get to C tropical. Okay? But this is not the end. Okay? So would I write it this way? I would think, come on. What a strange thing do I have? Okay, this thing I would say projects on the horizontal axis of the first, on the Z factor with degree one. But uh, something crazy happens when I'm trying to project to the Y factor. Here the degree is unclear. Here the degree is something like one. Here degree is unclear. Here degree is zero. Here degree is zero. I will say, come on, what is going on? I cannot do any good geometry here. Something happened with the degree. However, I have two interesting points, A and B, okay? Let me see what is going on on these points. We already started study of what happens at the point A, where we can ignore denominator. Hmm? It turns out that the module of this thing could be anything. So when this thing equals to zero, so this is one, and here I have uh, a function of the difference of angles. It can go from one, no, from two, but it doesn't matter too much, to zero. So taking a log, I go this way. Okay. Now I'm ready to study what is going on when Z tropical equals to B. And you may easily see that the similar thing happens. This thing could also go from two to zero. So when I divide, it goes say from two to infinity. So I have this.
and this thing is called a tropical I will write in black. Tropical curve of by degree one one in CP one times CP one. I can put it tropical. Okay. You see, interesting thing happened. Angles go away almost. The role of the angles is to make a function, a correspondence. So what is good about it? Uh, sorry, Andrei, could, could, could you explain again uh, how did this stretch appear, the vertical one? This one or that yes. one? Yes. Well, the first one. First mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. We have this factor. Yes. Uh, this factor could be, so now in this factor, I keep this exponent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let us see what is the value of this exponent, mm -hmm. the modulo of this exponent. Right. That's why that's what I'm interested in. The modulo of this exponent goes from two. That's not that important because the is the limitation going to zero? Two is like one. So this number goes from two, from zero to two, mm -hmm. depending on phases. So when I take log, okay, do you remember that log of a small positive number? is uh, minus big number, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So log of this goes from zero, log of one is zero, log of two is zero in the tropical sense. However, it could be very low and it comes to this line. So if phi A is close to phi Z, okay? Mm -hmm. And the difference is some small number times, okay? Let us consider the case where phi A is phi Z plus, I need to take a now uh, lambda divided, why divided? Multiplied by H, okay? Could it be that phases differ by a small number proportional to H? Why not, right? Then let me plug it here. Mm -hmm. And you see what I have. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's yeah. not H standing here. But uh, but if I put here lambda, I will have here 
y one minus e to the i lambda. So I never checked, by the way. So here, lambda tropical could be defined by this. So since this is small, I put here minus. So formula should be rigorous. In this way, I deform lambda t. And it is this lambda t, this one. So for, so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between lambda and lambda t, right? Is it clear that you can solve this equation? Yes, yes. What, what, what do the arrows mean in the picture? Arrows? Yes. Because now I want to join things. I wrote something uh, uh, in the limit when z was strictly smaller than it. So before z hit, hit it, it was just a constant map. That when it, when it hits it, it goes down. So it is kind of critical phenomenon, if you wish. Something happens. If you wish, you can study this phenomena perturbatively in age. Because after all, for a fixed age, it is actually a curve. It, it was a curve, it was a curve. In some sense, I am just looking at this curve in the, in the singular coordinate. So for each fixed age, these are good coordinate, but I want to take a limit. And you see what happened? You see, I do not want to hurry up. This is the main picture. If you understand this main picture, you understand the tropical world. I am not joking. So this is something that you should study at high school. After you know complex numbers, the first thing that you should study are these uh, pictures. It's a place where, where you should start ask. So, so what is good about this picture? First, things are simple. This correspondence contains of linear something and uh, horizontal, so everything is linear, okay? If you want to solve 
some kind of equations here, it's very easy to solve them. Piecewise linear equations. But before you start solving equations, you need properly pose these equations. So look, when I look at this diagram, as this correspondence, I see that A tropical and B tropical are at finite distance in tropical coordinates. However, what does it mean in original coordinates? Finite distance and tropical coordinates mean that uh, A and B, this A and B, are very far apart. So let, let me draw, let me give you some drawings so you could uh, get some tropical intuition. Just imagine that you have two numbers, A and B, on CP1. Like one and five. What is that tropical distance? One tropical is one. Five tropical is also one. So if this is one, if this is five, they are the same in ordinary world. To be at finite distance in the tropical world means that uh, one number as a number is much bigger than another number. So in order to go to the tropical world, what I am doing, I am taking this curve or function or whatever. And then I am tropicalizing not only coordinates here, but also parameters here to get a nice link. So to get something sensible in the tropical world, I need to say that parameters are adjusted together with the H. And we take the H to zero limit. H to zero limit means that A runs. So, okay, A is not somehow observable because it depends on choice of coordinates. You may say that A over B equals to E to the one over H, A tropical minus B tropical. That if I want to have a tropical minus b tropical fixed, I need to say that position of zero and poles are far away. Okay, far separated. Okay. So this is the tropical world where everything here should be tropical. But we know that it's what we do in uh, algebraic geometry. Parameters and variables should belong to the same ring field algebraic structure. Okay. Let me give you a joke. Okay. Let me put all, let me have more multipliers. Okay. 
okay? Z minus A1, B1. Z minus A2, B2. Z minus A, N. Z minus B, N. Okay? How can I write how can I write this down? Okay? It depends on the relative positions of this B1, B2, Bn, and A1, A2, An. Let me assume that all B1 for a moment are bigger than all AMs, okay? Then how the thing would go? So here I have angle 45 degree. Then I have a slope with a tangent equal to two. Then I have a slope like this. If you see, it's hard to depict it up, but it goes steeper and steeper, okay? Then at some moment, I have all Bs. Let me, for example, put B1 equal to B2 equal, equal to Bn. Opa. A1, A2, etc. An and B. No, I'm keeping this. So this looks like a giraffe, all right? So simplest case is this type of giraffe. Huh? Does it look like giraffe? So this is for n equal to. What can I say for about these giraffes and these multi leg giraffes? Is that these are curves in CP1 times CP1? Of what degree? They have by degree. They have by degree. With respect to the y factor and z factor. Okay, suppose that z belongs here and here y, so degrees of course one n. Okay. And I and I wrote it down. Having this correspondence, I can solve what? I can solve polynomial equations. So 
So what is polynomial equation here? I take all b's to infinity. I put c equals to product of all these b's. So I, I have a polynomial with the roots a. Okay. I can solve coefficients of polynomial, right? In terms of in terms of rule. You see, I can solve in tropical world the, the nth order polynomial. So, uh, Andrei, you asked me to be the time policeman. Uh, yes, yes. So, is it clear that in this world, I can solve uh, the old problem of uh, algebraic geometry? And the old problem of algebraic geometry is how to solve uh, polynomial equation of degree Say five. We do not have a solution in terms of square root, right? But it's instructive uh, to see how to solve quadratic equation. Okay. So let us solve quadratic equation as an example. Z minus A1, Z minus A2. Okay. So let us solve this equation. It's very easy to solve. A1, A2 equals to B, right? A1 plus A2 equals minus alpha. Let us solve this in tropical world. Okay. A1 tropical plus A2 tropical equals beta tropical. It's one thing. And what is, what do I have here? I think you see that you can solve this without having any problems. So this is transformation from A to alpha and beta. You can solve it in the, in the opposite way. And uh, uh, you can solve it for any n. You see, all uh, polynomial solutions could be easily and effectively solved. Hmm? You see, it makes it, this world interesting. You see, it makes it uh, explicit. And you can also check what's going, what is going on with parameters. You see here, not so here, extremum in some picric sense, because you have this leg phenomenon. You need to study several cases. You see, would it be an ordinary course? I would go into these uh, exercises. But uh, what I actually want you to do is to be interested. So for someone who is interested 
in this. We can have a special assignment. Here I put extremal because of this lag phenomena that was observed by Senhu. So you can do a lot. You can write nice pictures. Okay, and now, and now I want to make a break, right? And you may think about this crazy world. Think about the H prime correction. Okay, it is asymptotic. It's interesting to see, to have H for prime corrections. So, so what is the quantum correction? Ah, good question. How to solve quadratic equation and what are the quantum corrections to this solution? Hmm? Hmm? Interesting, interesting. I, I think it's interesting. So before uh, we'll make a break, I just want to say that you may solve uh, quadratic equation in different uh, rings of coefficients. So here I propose complex tropical ring, okay? It's interesting that you can also play. With this equation, with this epsilon infinitesimally small, it's also interesting to solve quadratic equation. And you will have a different world. Here you will have a world of, uh, of rooted uh, planar trees. Hmm? Here we have a world of these giraffes, you see? Equation is the same. You just work on over different over different rings, and this idea is basically the idea of Grothendieck. Hmm? That so that you can solve quadratic equation in in any number systems, okay, or over different bases. It's a space of parameters. So what I'm doing here is not that crazy as it may look. And every time you take an interesting uh, ring or field or algebraic structure of coefficients, you get kind of new mathematics. So it's uh, philosophy why tropical uh, is also good. But here, once again, it's important to study complex tropical and not uh, real tropical. Because in the complex tropical, you actually have curves, you actually have degree. So in order to study degree of projection over Y, you can either write a line here and you have N points of intersection. You can also pull, have a line here. You have one point of intersection. However, this point of intersection is a special because this line where two poles come together is a special line. It's a double pole. You see, it looks the same, but uh, it, it came where several uh, simple poles come together. That's why the intersection theory here and here should depend on details of this line. Okay. So I yeah, left you with should, this. So we should, take the slope into, we should take the slope into account. It's not the slope. 
that we have to take into, take into account. No, but it when is, we cut uh, this, when we cut this giraffe at different levels, when then we will intersect the different different numbers of vertical lines, but the slope of the of the non-vertical line will be different. Mm -hmm. I, I, so it is not the slope; it is important integer vector that is here. Mm -hmm. Because here you see slope here and slope here is the same. You need to see what is the difference between this line and this line. Or what happens? Ah, sorry, yes, yes, yes. Where two yes. vertical lines come together. They form yes. a new line. In order to understand these lines, you need to recall what happens with the fives, with the angles. OK? And that's what I will describe in the third part, OK? Mm -hmm. And uh, my last remark is, look, this also looks like Feynman diagrams, OK? And uh, we will come to this uh, tomorrow. Why these are Feynman diagrams and where? OK? Now we have a break, five minutes break. Thank you, policeman. So, um, uh, Andrei, um, yes, I'm here. Uh, so, an organizational thing. So, I, I will not, uh, I will not be able uh, to be on Friday at your seminar. I will try to join on Thursday, but Friday to overlaps with the talk that I have to give. So, uh, I'll try to somehow, or may, may, maybe just if you join this link that you were using for kind of my Zoom room here, it should just work. You see, uh, okay, so if you will not be on Friday, mm -hmm. you see, because uh, I have another talk on Friday. Yeah, I know. About maybe you have seen from. The... Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, but uh, uh, this is talk for Asia. Okay, so uh, let us see. So. Uh... No, but there were other people for whom it, it was convenient to gather on Friday at that time. Oh. So. So my rule is, I should always get at least two listeners. Yeah, but last time there were four, and four minus one is three. So, right, so it four minus three. one is three, but not all uh, four are stable. Mm. Okay, still, uh, still, there is also a rule that anyone could uh, skip. A, a, any talk at any time for his own or her convenience. Okay? I have an excuse. No, no, it's, excuse. you don't need to give an excuse. So I, I read about uh, schools in Finland. Uh -huh. So in Finland, uh, it goes as follows. You can uh, skip school when you don't, uh, when you are not in good mood. <laughs> and this is considered as a good excuse. Right. So that's that's what something that I missed in my school days. You see. Yeah. So uh, you do not need to have a reason why you are skipping. Just you just say so it's a, it's your privacy. You see. No, no, no. There should be a book of reasons. I was stuck in an elevator. I was. Uh, I don't know. No. no, no. You, first, you see, when you are giving reasons why you are skipping, you are losing your freedom. Right. So, okay. Or meta, meta oh, oh, so, or something. So, so you will attend the course up to uh, 
finite number of misses. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah, so, but uh, anyway, uh, the, po the point is that uh, we're using that uh, room, kind of uh, Notre Dame's room, so okay. that you can record, right? And uh, uh, I don't quite know how to do that because I can't make you a host there because uh, apparently I can't, I tried to do that. Okay, so we'll try, so we'll figure out how to do it, okay? Yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll figure this out, yeah. Maybe we can even cancel this Friday's talk. Because not only finite misses are allowed, you see? No, 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 I, I, don't, I don't feel that uh, my absence should be a, have a snowballing effect. Okay. 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 We will not skip this talk. We right. will find out how to make a room. Mm -hmm. You see, to find out how to make a room is easier than to make. Uh, actually, actually, joining the room will not be a problem. Uh, recording there probably should also be not be a problem. We'll see. So, if you give a colia right to record. That's the same problem because uh, it, it, for either of you to give you a right of being a host in that room, either of you need, need, needs to have kind of a Zoom account. And I don't uh, think. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, pa uh, Pasha, let us uh, think about it. Mm -hmm. Say so later today. Okay. Or for you tomorrow. Right. You see, now everybody can, can have a Zoom room, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. No, but here, kind of using the good, ad, ad, good resource that, well, the university okay. sort of provides a nice one. Okay. Okay, so now let's continue, okay? So, can we have loops? Yes. Uh, how, how are they generated? You see, uh, to have loops, so now, you see, good. Now you are starting, starting to think in terms of this world. So before I come to the issue of loops, before I come to the issue of loops, I'd like to say something about uh, Okay. We need to know something about it. We need some more information. So now, but, I'm uh, going to consider this. So now I'm continuing. Oh, so, so I also had a kind of a, a question comment that I thought that there was a thing called amoeba, right? Of an algebraic curve, which yes. was a, th a thick version of, of these pictures. Yes. So, uh, okay, well, let me first explain what amoeba is.
is a picture when h is finite but small. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see that everything is thickened. Mm -hmm. You see, formulas are explicit. So when H is finite but small, what happens? Depending on angles, these things move a bit. Because after all, it is uh, a uh, so uh, moduli depends on angles in an interesting way. So not only these things are curved a bit, okay? They are also thickened. And this is what is called amoeba. Mm -hmm. And this is what Michalkin is doing. What I am, pro what I am proposing to do but that what but that but what I am not doing yet is to replace small but finite by formal H. So here I am on the gross index side. It is not geometry, but algebraic geometry. H is finite, by it, but small means that we are doing analysis. Formal H means that we are doing algebraic geometry. So you can actually try to solve everything in the power series in H. and see the results. And you'll get, uh, I hope, interesting numbers, all right? You see, where in the analysis you have approximations and estimations in algebraic geometry, you have uh, Nice, well-defined numbers, okay? So this is Michalkin, and that's what I propose. Okay? So actually, this is a, is a kind of, a, you see, this finite age corrections is kind of, kind of a research program for, for a student. Okay. What are you doing? I am doing quantum corrections to solution of quadratic equation. Hmm? Sounds fascinating, yes? Now, let me come back to this picture. And now I am going to consider it not as a map from Z to Y. I am going to consider it as a curve, okay? And actually, I would like to tell you that this is, uh, a uh, complex curve in CP1 times CP1. Now, what is the model of CP1 times CP1 
that I would take. I will consider toric model. Toric model of CP1 is C star and you add what I call zero and what I call infinity. In toric geometry, it's called compactification divisor. Of this stuff. And uh, I would like to use, of course, logarithmic linear structure on this star. Not structure that is inherited from C, but uh, coordinates such that Z equals to e to the r plus i phi, of course. So in these coordinates, these divisors are in the infinitely far away. What happens at these divisors? The circle shrinks. Okay, so But we need not only CP1, but actually CP1 times CP1, right? So let us see what is CP1 times CP1. Still, I don't want to erase this picture. CP1 times CP1. It's of course C star times C star compactified with how many divisors? Okay, so this is the first time I'm asking the audience how many divisors are used in compactification of C star times C star? Four. Right, four, of course. Zero, 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 infinity, infinity, zero, or infinity, infinity. Just imagine that this is an infinite square. Sorry, what I'm writing. You see, I made this for. You see? Yes. I was not writing a divisor. You see, two by two is four, but you need to write it properly. Are oh, you writing corners instead of sides? Yes, and uh, it's it's a mistake. <laughs> C star times zero, C star times infinity. So these are these four devices. One, two, Three, four. Or you may say that divisors are sides of the square. So this divisor is uh, Zero in the first coordinate times C star. Okay. While this divisor is C 
So you start on the first coordinate time zero. Okay, so it's clear how to write down the size. Now, what is the structure of these devices? So here we have C star times C star. And we have, have of course, S1 times S1 as a fiber. So, so I'll write it this way. C star times C star is one. It's a fiber bundle. S1 times S1. No. Sorry, I need to write it this way. So this, this is how I'm writing the fiber. Okay. So what happens as a divisor? For the CP1, something shrinks as a divisor. Here also, a divisor. Let's say here, zero times C star. First, S1 shrinks. Okay. Here also, the first C1 shrinks. However, here, second S1 shrinks. So, divisors are interesting things. There are positions where one is one shrink. So not only we are writing these devices like this, but we equip the divisors by the integer uh, vector. Say one zero means that the first S1 shrinks. And we also equip this divisor with one zero. Devices here, are equipped with zero one. So now we see the topology. So CP1 inside the CP1 times CP1, it could be a divisor CP1, but we can also have other CP1s. This is another CP1. You see everywhere above this CP1, I have uh, a circle and it shrinks here. Okay. Now, what is interesting here? Let us come to this picture. Let us study the very first example. How can we understand this curve? Of course, it's a rational curve. We should understand it in the following way. We need to decompose it 
into segments. I'll put them, call them one, two, three, four, five for convenience. What is the segment one? This one. It is a disk. We go from here up to infinity where a uh, circle shrinks. That's why I write it like this. What happens here? It's another disk. Now, what is the joining point that happens? Ah, it is the most interesting thing here. First of all, this is a cylinder. Now, we can look what are the allowed the phases over one and over two. And these are two different uh, circles in the fiber. So phases above segments. R what? R S ones from the fiber. You can study it uh, solving the equation of the curve. So you can check that above line one, you have the you have the first s1 and above the line two you have the second s1 that i'll depict by an integer vector and these two disks are joining at this very interesting point and now I am coming to the segment three. And I can convince myself that this segment three is a cylinder. One second. Let me recall what this was. It was y equal to z, right? So it is clear that phi y was equal to phi z. When phi y equals to phi z, it means uh, that I am wrapping the diagonal circle in the swan times the swan. And this wrapping of the circle of a swan times the swan is an integer vector. And of course, this integer vector is the result of sum of integer vectors of wrapping from this disk and from this disk. And this is basically the procedure. You see, it takes time to imagine this. Once you imagine this, you will understand 
the tropical world. So it's the embedding of CP1 into CP1 times CP1. Yes. It's embedding of CP1 into CP1 times CP1. According to the marvelous formula, Y is C, Z minus A, Z minus B. You see, in order to imagine the world, you do not need to study the general case. You just need, need to imagine what's going on in the simplest case, and then you can easily generalize. Just study this thing. You may ask, why should I study this thing and not even, even simpler thing? Why not this? I'm telling you it's because this is a singular limit of this from the point of view of embeddings. You take this point exactly to the corner and you don't actually see what's going on. So it's better to come to a general position, however, for the simplest uh, degrees. So this is a general position of uh, degree one map from CP1 to CP1. And here we see what is going on. What is important here is that you can understand this CP1 in, inside of CP1 times CP1 as a result of the following process. Here, this compactification divisor, the point blows up to the circle wrapping S1 on the fiber, and then it go, goes upward. At the same time, another point on this device also blows up to the circle, and then it goes to the right. So you start to have these two holomorphic disks inside CP1 times CP1. At some moment, they meet two wrappings are topologically transformed into one mapping. So this is called pens construction. So if, if you have wrapping here and here, the wrapping here should be a sum of the mappings or a product. And that's why mapping or wrapping on this leg and wrapping on this leg sum up. And then they go together for some time. And then things decouple. So this simplest CP1 inside CP1 times CP1 is what uh, physicists are calling, are calling scattering process. Two particles coming together form something and then they go. Moreover, it's interesting to see, to observe the following. Uh, here we, are, here we were studying the curves. However, we can study parameterized curves.
what is Fermi triangle? I want to study a map of C star to C star times C star, okay? I want this map to be holomorphic. I think it's a good idea. So how, how I can do it? Here I have coordinates R1, phi1. Here I have coordinates R2, phi2. Here I have coordinates rho plus rho and phi. So what is the condition of being of being holomorphic? Let me tell you the answer. Condition of being holomorphic is I can I, I, you can write it down, you can solve it. There are not so many holomorphic maps from C star to C star. R I equals N I row phi i equals n i phi. Okay, I, I can put here, I will do it like this. I will put index, indices up. As physicists like to put, indices up. It is clear that r i plus i phi is an A of rho plus I phi. And it is clear that this is a holomorphic map because it is that. And this is also that. So holomorphic maps from C star to C star times C star is given by an integer vector. So what I have here, I have here pieces of this map. Here, my vector is zero one. Here, my vector is one zero. As a meeting point, vectors are added, and then things go this way. Holomorphicity means that the wrapping of the circle and the direction of propagator are governed by the same vector. I'll write it down. Wrapping of the phase and direction of propagator are given by the same integer vector. And this is this formula. So <clears throat> a fine coordinates, holomorphic map has to be a fine. Yes.
And you have simple rapid conservation or momentum conservation. They are the same. Rule as the interaction vertices. Join and split. And that's the holomorphic curve. Now, now let us see why this line from the previous piece of my talk is different from that line. It is also a vertical line. However, this line is zero end. It propagates vertically as it's written. However, it has n times wrapping. So above this line, above this line, the circle wraps n time. So direction is the same, vertical. However, wrapping is different. And now I want to do the following. I want to compute what? I want to compute intersections. So I have one curve like this. I have another curve like this. And I want to compute intersections. And of course, I would like to compute it with multiplicities. OK? So when 1, 0 and 0, 1 intersect, of course, you get 1. It is how you say that you have a point with the fixed coordinates z and y. However, when you intersect lines like this, they have integer vectors. And you can have multiple and multiplicities uh, coming from angles. And the Michalatin says that here you just need to take a vector product. So actual uh, formula for intersection, of course, is not a vector product. It's, of course, a tensor product uh, of the integer valued uh, module. So these are multiplicities. So if you understand this, now you can understand what is a loop, OK? Let me write you down a loop. So a loop or higher genus Riemann surface could be also written in the same way. However, the picture is not that simple. So this is the picture that I know. So this is genus one curve in CP1 times CP1. That, of course, has higher multiplicities. It, it, it has higher degrees. OK? This curve, OK, I want to write down the frames in blue. So 
So it has a degree two comma two. How can I com com compute degree? The degree is the intersection of the curve with the divisors. So it intersects these divisors in two points. Of course, since this divisor is homotopical to this divisor, it also intersects at two points. It also intersects vertical divisors at two points. So this is uh, by degree two. So can you write down the equation typicalization of which gives this picture? Oh, I need to think. Um, however, there is a way to, to write down equations because it's, it's a simpler to write down the generate equation and then you blow something up. So now I erase this picture. But also if we would have started with an elliptic equation, wouldn't it give you a loop? Elliptic equation in CP, elliptic equation is in CP2. And this is CP, CP1 times CP1. Still, let me follow Pasha proposal. So first, let us write down CP2. Mm -hmm. In CP2, we have the following devices, like this, like this, and like this. Three devices. One divisor is of type 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And this divisor is, of course, one one. Then there is degree one curve. Ah, very nice. Massive bands. Do you know how to write down degree two curve? There is a trick. You take two degree one curves, you join them, and it's definitely degree two curve, right? However, it's the generate. But then you make this desingularization. Okay? So what I wrote here. This is singular degree two curve, all right? Why it is singular? It has uh, uh, this vertex. It's not trivalent, it's four-valent vertex. How to desingularize? Hmm? Like this, you see, I just uh, remove the four valent vertex in the product of two three valent vertices. Okay, you can write it down in equations, but uh, for me, pictures are enough. So this is. Now, general degree two curve. And of course, it's also rational, as we know. However, now I, now I want to improve degree. Degree three, C. 
what I'm doing. Oh, I add another curve of degree one. This curve has two singularities here and here. I can resolve the singularities. I can resolve the singularities. What I'll have? Elliptic curve. Do you see the cycle? I do. This is elliptic curve of degree three. You see, that's how step by step I start reconstructing algebraic geometry in the tropical setup. And now my time is over. Okay. So what I was trying to tell to you, I was trying to tell to you how you can get tropical world of algebraic geometry. At the moment, I explained to you how to get elliptic surfaces in CP2, okay? And it's interesting to study this, okay? But now, if you think a bit, you can see that uh, it's not only elliptic curves that I can get, I can get uh, higher general curves. Now, if I start to think about not CP2, but CP3, yes? And I'll try to write down curves there and the surfaces there, I'll come to the notion of uh, a tropical manifold. And what, what would be great that this uh, manifold uh, has a combinatorical description. You see, it all turns out that I am able to write down pictures. Moreover, this elliptic curve has a moduli, right? And there is a problem in algebraic geometry called the period map problem. It is the question how to write down moduli having equations. You have equation, write down period. To do this, you need to do elliptic integrals, right? Elliptic integrals could not be done. They are not polynomials, they are not rational functions. There are new functions, transcendental functions. However, in the tropical world, you may see, you may, you may compute what is the tau modular par parameter. It is kind of the length of this loop. You may ask how it could be. Why something transcendental uh, becomes that simple? And that is because we are doing tropical world where we are taking asymptotics. You see, here we are taking h, h bar going to zero asymptotics of everything. And of course, if you have elliptic integral, you cannot compute it, sure. But you can compute it asymptotics, okay? So the philosophy the tropical philosophy is 
is as follows. What do we actually want from algebraic geometry? Maybe from algebraic geometry, you need topology of the space of solution. And if they are periods, it is enough to compute various asymptotics. So if you com can compute various asymptotics, maybe it's enough for your description of the space. So uh, uh, that's what's going on. And if you add to this pure tropical philosophy, H bar corrections, it would be already a great piece of knowledge, a big piece of knowledge. Because just imagine that you want to understand spectrum of polynomials, okay? And for some reason, you have problems understanding this spectrum. So first you understand spectrum of C, not a great deal. Then you understand spectrum of C of X. Deformation of this. It's still, still, it's still they are not polynomials, but these are close enough, you see? So polynomials up to degree n are almost are almost polynomials. In the same way, if you study tropical geometry, and this is h bar to equals to zero, and add h corrections, you will you should get something almost as good as. Uh, actual algebraic geometry up to what Sam called non-perturbative phenomena. Maybe sometimes it's possible to add this non-perturbative phenomena and you will get the and you will get this description of geometry in terms of classical solution, it is tropical, then H corrections plus non-perturbative phenomena. Just just make this decomposition. So before we do such things in quantum field theory, like people speculate, we have classical solutions, we have loop corrections, and we have non-perturbative things, and we add them up together, and this is the full quantum field theory. These are speculations. In algebraic geometry, you can play the same game where everything is fi finite and under control and see if there are such decompositions. So it will be a model of uh, dreams of uh, physicists. Okay, so uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll apply all this geometry to holomorphic curve counting. And of course, these diagrams would be Feynman, Feynman diagrams, and we will uh, see what is the quantum field theory that generates these diagrams. Okay? And this would be exactly BC or VC. So, please ask questions, if any. Um, I have a question. Um, yes. When we desingularized the singularities, right? So we chose a particular way to to kind of pair up the resulting edges. Let's say. So is there some kind of crossing symmetry? I mean, it, it looked like we did the upper left two and then the lower right two, and we joined. But I mean, we could have done. Well, it let, let us see. Let us see. It, it, it's a good question. So 
So we have this, right? Yes. So we can desingularize it this way, and we can also desingularize it this way. Yes. So for me, there are uh, these are two different desingularizations. So moduli seem to be a bit different. So at the moment, I don't know how to write it down explicitly. It's it's a good question. So this, for me, looks something like x, y equals to zero, right? Yes. So I'm trying to see in which sense this is like hyperbola. So this, for me, looks a bit like this. But here we have two components, and here we have one component. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's because uh, there are, so here we, we write this as a real picture, but we need to include imaginary picture. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, so it, it, it's a good question. I actually think that these two pictures correspond to the singularization of this type, maybe with different uh, values of this k. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I never studied this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So asymptotically, you see, when x and y are big, you can forget about this k. Like this thing looks just a, a, as a cross if you look from far away. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, example to study. So it seems that uh, the length here is the, the moduli of K. However, direction probably is in the phase of K, I don't know. I never thought about it. Let me conclude this by telling you what is, how to write down K3 surface, okay? I need to say something how Parker would say inspiring, okay? So I want Pasha not to sleep, okay? So you see cubic surface in CP, in CP2, okay? It is this, but I can I can do it in the following way. Let this be almost one divisor. This would be almost second divisor. This would be almost third divisor. It's triangle. So this is equation. Z0, Z1, Z2 equals to zero, right? In CP2. Hmm. And then I am adding some terms. Adding some terms means that I have something here. Small terms. So triangle. is elliptic curve. Ah, so if I am that smart, as people say in the United States, I, will, I should be able to write you what? 
Now I'm writing UK3 surface. Hmm? So CP3, okay? So CP2 is three devices on a plane. CP3 are four devices in the space. So that's something that I still able to write down. Okay, we call it a pyramid. We have, so pyramid has four faces. Yes. Horizontal, this one, this one, and this one. So four faces, okay. Faces of the pyramid are Z1 equals to zero, Z2 equals to zero, Z3 equals to zero, and of course, Z0 equals to zero, right? Like here. This was Z0 equals to zero. Great. Now, the union of these four things. So the surface of this pyramid is a singular cut three. <coughs> Given by equations. <coughs> well, in CP3, okay? Now, it's a singular K3. How can I desingularize it? In the same way, I'm adding some small terms. So something happens at the corner. But basically, it's this. The topology of the real part is a sphere. Like the topology of the real part of the elliptic curve is a circle. And this turns out to be, so I'm say, I'll say something. Exactly the condition of being a labial because Toric varieties in tropical world have PQ decomposition of cycles. And PQ decomposition of cycles is very simple. There is something that lies inside the real part and, th and there is something that lies in imaginary part. So PQ decomposition is the decomposition, is decomposition into cycles that lies in the real part and in the imaginary part. Here we have top cycle in real part, one. And this is exactly a statement that H1, zero of elliptic curve equals to one. And here the fact that the surface of the pyramid is a sphere is a statement that H2 zero of K3 equals to one. So this is a way to see that it is Calabiao that top D0 cohomology equals to one. It means that its topology is a sphere. Then you may ask, where are these other cycles? Of course they are here. 
So when I am resolving these corners, I should get this E8 times E8 intersection lattice. I don't know how to do this, but uh, I know that it should come out of this. Okay, you see, now I'm, you see, I can write down K3 and even uh, if I enlarge my imagination, I can write down the quintic and work with quintic in a coordinate way, in, in the geometrical way. Yes, it's enough. Okay. So my time is strictly over. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's very uh, inspiring. Uh, yeah, Andre, thanks. Uh, I'll try to connect on Thursday. I'm very much looking forward to the connection with BCOV. Of course. It, it, so connection with BCOV is how I'll apply this uh, to holomorphic curves. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Long live tropical uh, geometry. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, um, okay. So um, it's. Uh, um, so somebody made the recording, I hope. Yes, I did. Yes, yes, I did. So I will stop the recording now. Yes. Thank okay. you, Don.